My name is Ratsuni and I'm pretty sure I only have one card left in the Hellhorns that I actually have to turn golden. So let's try and get that. I mean, we'll also try and get any of the Awoken cards we need to turn golden in this run, but uh, generally the idea is I want to get both those completions at 100%. None of these, dang it. We do have a basis for an Imp deck though, has the power to cleanse you of your sinful ways, so buff debuff removal. Um, so the Sharpen I can't use consistently, but I can use it uh, for the start. Sharpen is actually really, really, really good in uh, in the start of the runs as the Hellhorns. One sec. Okay, guess we're going for an Imp deck. Uh, <laughs> cool. Because if you put it on the Hornbreaker Prince with Slay Gain Armor, every time it gets attacked by a small minion, that small minion will die to its spikes, and that counts as the Slay for the sake of the Hornbreaker Prince here. Uh, so we'll take the Hornbreaker Prince over the Hornbreaker Prince, because the Hornbreaker Prince's Slay is worse than the Hornbreaker Prince's Slay. Savvy? Savvy? And to its spell shield does not matter at all to me. We'll just, uh, I mean, honestly, like, we can probably just win this by going, like, you go there, you can have one of those as well. Let's start popping down imps behind you. I actually should probably start torching those imps as well. Yeah, let's start torching the imps. That is whenever I get the opportunity to. Another one, uh, and I'll torch you, and I'll pyre chomper so they can torch you. Great. The idea here is largely that I just want to get enough armor on my Hornbreaker that it by itself will be able to kill the boss when the boss comes up to this floor. And I want to leave space so I can play other imps later. Pretty sure I can put two Impish Scholars in front of you. Yeah, uh, put two Impish Scholars in front of you and still kill all of the enemies. So that'll actually automatically remove them for me. Right there. Yeah, we'll be able to kill the boss by ourselves now. Okay. I'm gonna go Train Steward behind, torch you so that I can drop a Fledgling Imp. Great, this will do. In fact, it definitely already has. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we barely lose anything. That'll do. All right. Uh, ritual of battle. I mean, boss and debuffs get cleared in the final fight, so that's not great for us. March of Shields, Ritual of Battle, Hornbreak. Uh, I don't want to do any of these. Um, yeah, I really don't want any of these. Sting, Vine Grasp, and Pyagro. I mean, again, not really. What do I want to do with this deck? I have the, uh, I have the Impsicle. Nothing yet. I'm going to take a Pyogre so that I have a good uh, spell target to reduce the cost of. Ooh, but this is Hellhorned Unit and then Merchant of Steel. I could get a Hellhorned Unit that's a good backliner, put it behind my uh, my big demon boy. That's, uh, sorry, my Hornbreaker. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Hmm. Interesting. It's got to be the Branded Warrior, right? I don't like it. It'll be good again early on. It just won't be good uh, later. So I'll give it two Strength Stones here so that it slays more targets. Like in the early game, this is going to be great. We will be able to knock down so many bosses with just what we picked up. Uh, but... This won't win the final fight at all. So I effectively just bought myself time to find something else that I need to pivot to. 
Numbers enemy units gain uh, plus four. That's fine. When they get to the top floor, as long as I manage to kill the backliners so they don't teleport to the top floor or haste themselves to the top floor. Uh, when the, what are you called again? Clergyman. When the clergyman get to the top floor, they'll have five damage, which is exactly the amount that we get back on the Hornbreaker with the slay. Uh, so like that plus the welder helpers, I should still be in a pretty good position. Also a unit banner is another minion around which I could build possibly. Okay, that's not good. Uh, Hornbreaker, Branded Warrior behind. I'm going to Welder Help and Sharpen. Didn't manage to get a Torch there, so we're going to be taking more damage this turn than I had hoped. I still only lose 6 HP out of all of this as well, by the way. I think it's pretty good. I'll pop that there for the kill. I mean, actually, I'll murder you so that these go to the top floor with less damage. Sure. Could scarcely have worked better. Okay, two cards left in the deck. One's a Welder Helper that's already free. Don't get that. Hey, Train Steward! But that's basically free already. I gotta torch that and get a welder helper down now. Heck, I actually gotta torch my welder helper as well there for the next welder helper that we get. It's the only way I'm gonna end up with like enough armor to actually hold off the boss here. Okay. Let's go fledgling for the rage, torch you, welder helper, then molting him to see the 50 50. Didn't work out. Throw train skewer down there, though. Great. So they're going to come to the top floor in the next step, but that's okay. It, it, like, I'm not going to get more prepared before then. Yeah, that's pretty much how I expected this one to go down. Take that. Fledgling him. Give me the pyre grow for an impish scholar that'll give me hmm, approximately nothing. None of those cards are spells, but it doesn't matter at all. Like, we already have a kill. Great. I might actually want to go for extra capacity at the first boss. It really depends. Uh, again, all of these are a little bit of a problem with the cleanse you of your sinful ways kind of thing the enemy is doing. Vent is... Vent as AoE, like we effectively have AoE just reactively rather than proactively on the spikes on the Hornbreaker. So I'm not going to take Vent for that reason. Spreading spores I would usually take in this position and then pivot towards, but again, cleanse you of your sinful ways. Uh, Steel Enhancer, maybe? Because that's not a buff. It's an enhancement. So it, uh, it sticks around. What's the likelihood I end up giving you Multi-Strike after this? High? It's pretty high, isn't it? Steel Enhancer. Look, even if it's not great, we'll have a copy. Alpha Friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How many floors can I set up? Or am I waiting for Ascend and go up for Ascend? But then I... But then, like, all the imps go on different floors. I kind of like runs that just have, like, two floors of imps and then one overstacked floors of big boys. Let's get a big boy for that. Okay. Do you have any cards ex uh, except for your champion in your deck? Uh, I don't actually want another Branded Warrior. If I had a copy of Ascending any... Uh, sorry, Ascend the Halls, Ascend something. Can't remember. The Hidden Passage. There we go. It doesn't even have Ascend in the name. Uh, if I had a copy of Hidden Passage, I'd be duping that right now, but I don't, so it won't. Let's go to the Merchant of Steel and see what we have. Multi-Strike, please. That's quick. Um, quick on an Alpha Friend? No, because if the Hornbreaker Prince is in front of it with Spikes then the idea is the Hornbreaker Prince will take all of the low uh, damage enemies' hits and just live through them. And then after that, the big targets will be revealed and then I respond to them. So I actually don't want my Alpha Friend there to be quick. Uh, for artifacts here, Ashes of the Fallen and Grg's Goad are the two best things we can find. 
Unbroken Horn can serve energy between turns is not bad here, especially considering a lot of the time from the Impsicle, we might get Pyre Chomper, which is just five extra energy, and we oftentimes don't have the ability to use it on the turn. So this will just give us the ability to hold that for a later turn. Ooh, give me half. Nah, money. Okay, I'm fine with money. The half event here, which is the blacksmith event, uh, would have given me the ability to throw quick onto the, uh, what are they called again? It's spike drive colonies. And then that, ooh, that could be a good time. Although, you know, especially with all the imps and spike driver colonies, I don't know where I'd be putting things. Um, yeah, I don't really want quick on alpha friends. I don't really want to put a heartstone on there either. The idea being that I want spaces in the Alpha Friend to later then modify. I'm kind of going to end up using Imps as my spells in this run. So I'm very likely to end up doing things like constantly going to Merchants of Steel. So I'm very likely to end up with other upgrades that I would prefer. Enemies deal two damage to the front enemy unit on death. That's a little bit annoying, but still clergymen in this fight. So they'll only deal one damage to me and then two on their death, but they, you know, give me five. So it's a net benefit for me. Uh, now this is interesting. Do I throw the alpha friend to the top floor? Because it'll never get a strike off if it's on the top floor. No, I'm going to pop you there. Impish Scholar in front of you to take the hit from the ex uh, the explosive. Then I'm going to throw Welder Helper. Fledgling Imp, like the Hornbrake Prince won't even get a chance to trigger that before it dies. I'm going to throw a Train Steward literally just away. Like, you can just die there. Thank you. This one is Branded, Torch, Welder Helper, Find a Pyre Grow to eh, Restore. Could be worse. I'm going to throw a Fledgling Imp here just to suck up some of the damage. Cool. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very much looking for... I'll even take the Dazed Ascension at this point, but I'm very much looking for an Ascend. I can't put spikes on the alpha friend in the bottom line because if I do... Hang on one sec. Gotta go to that there. Well to help him. Yeah. Because if I put spikes on the alpha friend in the bottom line, then the clergyman won't make it to the top line. And if they don't make it to the top line, I don't get the extra healing that they're effectively providing. One thing that I, I don't think I thought through enough is how many units in the early game will definitely die to the Hornbreaker and won't even get slain by the Branded Warrior. But at the same rate, I've drawn a lot of battles where there are just clergymen. I could have easily drawn battles where like enemies have 30 HP or 35 HP at this point in time, and then the Branded Warrior would be important. So I don't think it was necessarily a mistake as much as it just didn't happen to pan out in the way that I needed. Well, needed, wanted. Like, here's a 35, right? Although, yeah, th this one actually will die to a, a branded, branded, branded warrior. There we go. I was close to just call him Brandon instead. Not Brandon, the common name. Brandon, the name that is not a name. I didn't misspeak. <laughs> no, it, it must have been a different name I was trying to say and failed at that. Beauty. Eh. Eh. That. Nah. Really? It was already zero cost. Oh. I can't believe it. Yeah. So in the next area, we have a Merchant of Magic and... Not Merchant of Magic. Sorry. I'm, I'm not going on that side. Uh, unless I end up with a ridiculous spell here, which possible. No, we have a Merchant of Steel. What did it have next to it? I think it had money and maybe a removal. No, it wasn't a removal. 
Maybe it's just a merchant of steel and money. I'm just gonna end that turn. Oh, I'd love if it was an artifact. It's not gonna be though, but I'd love if it were. But it isn't. But if it were though, it's not though, but it would be good. But it isn't because it wasn't. Savvy? Uh, go for extra card draw? I mean, I do kind of hold energy with the, uh, the Unbroken Horn there. I did want to go for extra capacity, but like if I'm going for overstacking using like ascends, like this is already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pips on a single floor. So I would have to get two Hursal's compounds before I can actually naturally put them on the same floor. I'm gonna go for the additional draw actually. Dark Deal is big. Gets purged in the final fight though. Bramble Ash is not that big. Unleash the Wildwood, also not that big. I'm gonna pass. Woo, Shattered Shell. I'm gonna take it. Hell yeah. Why are you gonna take it? Because because it it has it has sweep and slay the two things that are kind of like invalidated by the Hornbreaker Prince. Well, let me tell you, it's not golden. I'm gonna make it golden. Okay. Uh, stop giving me quick! I I had this happen on a stream a couple days ago as well, where the game would refuse to give me anything except quick. I went to every Merchant of Steel I could have. And it was quick, 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 quick. Everywhere, despite the fact that it was objectively bad for me at the time. Ooh, steel worker. This gives me a steel worker to put in front of my other alpha friend. Yeah, I have to take that. Give it HP. Yeah, it's still worker. It takes the HP. Its whole point is that it just needs time to gain enough armor to be forever lethal effectively. Um, that'll help it have the time. Okay, on this floor, we have a dupe and a removal. We don't have anything in the deck that I want to dupe at this point. Uh, I have a lot that I want to remove. But over this side, we have a bunch of artifacts. And these could help me dictate what the run actually will be at that point. Like whether or not I'm going more into... Ooh, non-boss enemy units gain multi-strike. I am A-OK -okay with that. The big problem that we have here is these units have a resolve trigger, gain plus three damage after combat, and they have 20 health. Uh, so I need to set up on the bottom floor with the Branded Warrior and the Hornbreaker Prince as early as possible so that I can actually start cutting through them. Uh, when they start getting defenders in front of them, we're going to have a little bit of difficulty. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be where I start having to get my Alpha Friend and Steel Worker likely set up on the next line involved. But a random artifact at this point, especially considering we're artifact light, is good. Okay. Well, I didn't get what I wanted. Got my Hornbreaker. I'm definitely going to end up playing the Molten Imp in the front line here. Good. Now, set up the Alpha Friend on the next floor. Think about that. So I get to take down the front liner here. The back liner takes no damage. we will go up to the next floor and it'll have 5 by 10. So it can kill the Shattered Shell by itself. Or it could just kill the Train Steward instead. But that does mean that if I draw the steel worker next turn, I'm in a bad position. Don't you dare steel work me next turn, otherwise I'm gonna be sad about this. You steel worked me! How just why'd you steel work me? Oh, you steel worker. Can't believe it. Uh alright. So the front attacked me two times. You take a bit, decent amount of charm. Okay, cool. Actually, this is fine. This is fine. We weld a helper there for some defense. Then we don't need to torch you, actually. 
Because the Welder Helper does the damage. Oh, Welder Helper will end up getting the slay on the Light Harnesser here. But then the Branded Warrior will start slaying and actually giving everyone rage. So I, I'm fine with this. Uh, which means that I actually do have the ability to put the Steelworker on the top floor. Neat. Didn't think I was going to have the ability to do that. Steelworker's going to have a rough time up there, though. It's not going to be an easy ride. Train Steward definitely goes behind for the kill on the top floor. Sharpen definitely needs to be played here. This is exactly what I was talking about. Light Harness is about to go up another floor and be uh, having a bad time. It's going to be having a bad time. Or rather, I'm going to be having a bad time as a result of them having a good time. Basically just drew my minions out of the order that I wanted to draw them and the plays that I had to make in the in the moment for the sake of you know, better play uh, ended up being bad in the long run. Makes a lot of sense though. Okay, sharp again, Pyro. Oh, hell yeah, that hit sharp and I'm very pleased with that. We're going to have some trouble unless very soon I find a way to get rid of a Welder Helper and pop the Transcendent there for extra block on the Hornbreaker because the Hornbreaker isn't getting slays at the moment. And that's how they get health. So they're dying. Oh, thank you for the brief respite. Appreciate it. I'm going to torch one that doesn't get anything so I can pie a chomper just so I can keep that one of you as well. Yeah, so I keep the energy from the Pyre Chomper, which is why I did that. There's the Transcendent. Beautiful. Okay, actually, I don't have space under the floors, so we'll do that and then pop the Transcendent. Thank you for all the armor. <clears throat> wow, it wasn't enough? Huh. I'm amazed. I mean, like, that's not going to change anything. I'm still going to end up killing. It's just going to be on a different floor, but, like... Oof. Sharp and got him. Oh, even got him with an imp. Uh, thorn casing, sting spells gain plus 10 magic power and piercing. I'm about to go and look at a bunch of relics. I might find the other two sting relics. I'm going to take this. Speculatively. Okay, this is good. I want imp in a box here because I get, like, I, I get a lot of impish scholars and they give me nothing. But they will now give me imp in a box. Graft, I guess. Not super enthusiastic about that, but I'll take it. Cool. Friendly units gain plus two damage on kill. That will affect our Hornbreaker Prince like constantly. It's so good. Rage has an additional damage per stack. Probably take that as well. Forever Flame. I mean, that'll allow me to get a lot of minions out of my hand in the first cycle, and I didn't take energy from the previous boss, so could be good. The health and Hersel's Horde. Summon ability trigger an additional time is exactly what we've been looking for. Now Rage adds an additional damage per stack is even better because if I get a Pyre Chomper... Pyre Chomper? Is it Pyre Chomper? I think it's Pyre Chomper. No, Fledgling Imp. It's called Fledgling Imp. Sorry. Uh, if I get a Fledgling Imp, I pop that down. I get, you know, six Rage to all allies on that floor. Life becomes pretty good. Quite easy life. We mostly work with armor, so I'm going to remove a restore over a torch there. We'll, it's fine. We'll gain our damage from the Consumed Crown and from other effects. We'll take the Hornbreaker Prince with the uh, with the Slay effect here rather than Hornbreaker Prince with the Slay effect there. Any 
Enemy center with spikes three. This is an overcharged tank. It is big. It's like 85 uh, HP. So the problem with that is the branded warrior oftentimes will end up hitting it and only has five health. So if I give them spikes, I'll end up losing my branded warrior. Um, is that a problem? Not hugely. Will it cause me to take damage in this fight? Almost certainly. Um... Can't take it. Gotta be responsible. Okay. Do I need to set up on the bottom floor? It's a question I gotta ask myself. Because setting up on the second floor and top floor, like I'd go Hornbreaker Prince first, Brand of Warrior behind, Sharpen. Uh, and then the top floor, I'd want to set up my Alpha Friend and the uh, the Resolver behind it. The problem with that is that the... Like, the Hornbreaker Prince wants to be as low as possible to trigger their Slay effects. The Branded Warrior wants to be as low as possible and behind the Hornbreaker Prince for, this big, uh, for the fact that, like, that's as many minions as I can have on a floor with those two and an Imp. And also to trigger their Slay effects. Uh, but also, the Alpha Friend only upgrades if they strike. So they need to be striking enemies constantly as well. I can't put them all on the same floor. Just a little bit of annoyance right there. Should I set up a bottom floor here? Yes, but not because I want to. I should do it because I don't want to cycle back into these cards, and this is the best way to not do that. I'm probably going to need the damage from this rage, actually. And honestly, I need to get rid of welder helpers when I can! Don't want to draw a hand that's just well to help us. Okay, so we can kill the overcharged tank. That is great news. That is news I didn't think we would get. It looks like we can't get the collector, though. It's fine. It sucks, but it's fine. I can't play down the train steward here. I definitely need to leave space for the steel worker. Pass the turn. This sweeper is doing way too well. I need, like, I want this bottom floor to die. I know I helped them along by playing a welder helper, but I need to get it out of hand. Speaking of out of hand, yikes. Way too much is, not enough space for all of my, way too much. <laughs> I'm not really threatened at the moment at all. Okay. Overcharged tank goes to the top floor, but that's actually completely fine by me again. I do need to actually start getting like rid of as many of these as I can from my hand. I need ways to sacrifice my imps. Imp pressive actually isn't what I want. Just the uh, important work. Just that one for me, thanks. Ow. All right. Well, here's what I can do on this floor. Torch you, Engraf for the draw, transcend him for all of the rage and defense that I possibly need. By the way, this also ends up with a ridiculous amount of Ember, so if we get an x cost card, maybe we should just take it. Especially the Riches one. Ooh, that would be good. Oh. So we're doing this again then. Get him, transcend him. B 
beautiful. <sighs> Infinite box. Still need ways to sacrifice him. I don't know why I just took that. I still need ways to sacrifice him, and it's still a problem. I can't do anything significant in that Merchant of Steel, actually. I can't afford any of the bigger upgrades that would be there. I'm going to take the money here. I'm going to go to the Concealed Caverns. Please give me the Historian. No, that's not the Historian. That's the Penance Yard. They don't even sound similar. Uh, so the one with the Ember, playing a black card deals 50 damage to the front enemy unit. It's only black cards, not Scourge cards. So not the ones that the enemies add into your deck. Uh, this feels like a kind of unsupported event in the game at the moment to me. A little bit. Because you don't get Scourge cards from anything else in the game yet. Sorry, Black cards, rather. Uh, massive Stones. When summoned, friendly units gain plus one damage for every Black card in your deck. And you can get three Blights in your deck. I mean, I can take this and then I can duplicate another Blight into my deck. But that's four damage on all of my minions for the sake of having four Lights in my deck that can't be removed. There's also the Weathered Cold Stones, gain three Ventral Shards. Whenever you play your first Blight card each turn, restore three Pyre Health. So this one is actually... This one doesn't need other support. These two kind of do. Because three Calcified Embers, like you've given yourself, you know, three usages of 50 damage in your deck for three energy each. That's not unattainable. Like you can use... like. You can do double that for a whole floor with piercing for one more energy. And that doesn't purge itself from your deck. Also, none of these can be, uh, be made golden, so taking them for that reason isn't great. I'm going to pass. Really unfortunate. Like, I, I'm starting to get to the point that I can look at events and go, that's... I'm very glad I got that event. This is the event that I'm looking for. This is the event I hope in this circumstance. This is what this event could likely give me. Those kinds of things. I'm never hoping for that event. Outside of dailies, where sometimes you get scourges added to your deck at the very start. Never looking for that event. Um. I really don't want to play any of these. Let me empty the box. Second cycle of my deck is just going to be cycling through all the imps I didn't get to play in my first cycle of the deck. I'm, I'm kind of uh, kind of fine with that, I guess. Don't really think I get a choice. Okay, definitely set up on the bottom floor. Ooh, we're not actually even get kill. That's interesting. Okay, you go on the bottom floor. Set you up on the top floor to get you killed. There's like steel workers going here. Torches going there. Steel enhancer. Yeah, train steward shattered shell on the top floor just to get both of them killed. Uh, let's go train steward first, shattered shell second, because then one of them dies already. Fledgling Imp, I can throw you down on this floor, actually. Let's do that. Honestly, most of my game at this point is going to be deciding how I can get most minions and imps dead. I mean, it trains you behind you. Perfect. Also, having the Alabaster Guardians here is actually great for my Alpha friends because it gives them something to strike and actually upgrade against. Mmm, that's a lot of Impeter Box. That's a lot of Welder Helpers, actually. That's a problem. Okay. Don't really want any of those. 
The Welder Helpers are a problem because I can't, like, put them in the front line to sacrifice themselves. Because then the Clipped Guardian just hits them and they live because they have 20 armor? That's a problem I end up with often. Like, where do I put these imps? I need to have a way to sacrifice backliner imps, and that that's what I'm effectively gonna be looking for from my uh from my uh from the, the card choices after this, that is. Encant as much as you want. Fine by me. Throw that behind. Touch my own minion. Great, so we're actually going to start getting some health on the Hornbreaker here. Very glad to hear it. What I'm not glad to hear is it looks like uh, my Steelwork is dying. 24 incoming damage, yeah. What are you on, uh, 18? I can get you exactly to the point that you will definitely die. Right. Restore, restore. Still dies. So I guess I'm not doing that then. Let's go Pyre Chomper. Welder in the front line and then Fledgling. This is to get some more plays out. The idea there being that when I can kill the Welder Helper on the bottom line, I want to play a Transcend Imp where it was. Still trying to sacrifice units on other floors. It's not working out. All right, hang on. We got a pyre growth. Good. Uh, let's go. Let's weld a helper and then destroy it with a torch. Yeah, there's the transcendent. I knew that it was in this cycle. I was just waiting for it. Yep. There's all the armor I needed. Perfect. I mean, they did start me out with like imps galore, right? What they give me again it was a impish scholar and two welder helpers. Like, I've of course I was gonna try and draft in this direction occasionally, at least. I didn't want to, but I will. Take the Herzl's compound there. One horn's tome is actually really important for us as well. Multi-strike on the Hornbreaker Prince is huge. It ends up with a bunch of damage because of the Consumed Crown. And it's a buff that can't get purged by the, the boss. Well, it's not a buff. It's an ability, which is why it can't get purged. Uh, this side is just way more appealing than a heal I don't need, money I don't need, and a Merchant of Steel that I might. Yuck. Okay. Five copies of what, though? One Horn's Tome? Okay. See, now, if the, uh, if the Merchant of Magic there had, like, oh, I don't know, double stack or cost removal, then I could have just put that on the One Horn's Tome and then duplicated it five times. But no, instead he decided to have absolutely nothing of value. Rude. Think about me, what I want to win the game. I really don't need either of these. I'll take the iron drop cage. It's not necessary at all and it won't help us at all. But at least I now have it. 
Enemy sense with spell shield. Fine. <laughs> I don't really cast spells with my enemies. I cast them at me, and then I cast my enemies at me as well. All right, I should set up on a second floor. Right? Shade wings. They consume the souls of their victims to heal and grow stronger. And it's on this slay trigger. Okay. No, I'll still set up on the second floor. I want to have the ability to get another uh, one horns tome out before I do anything here. Okay, it's a higher jump. Tome him. And then now I can start sacrificing some units. Yes. There's two one horns home that I managed to get. Oh, take both of those, thank you. Let's uh, play out a impish scholar on a bottom floor. It gives me back a one horn tome, and then another one horn tome. Oh, game's easy. Game's game's working out real well. Fire chompers. Oh, I got a fire chomper. I mean, it's not two. I did ask for two. Guess I'll have to make do with what I have. Uh, let's the bottom of the line again. Good. We actually end up saving a unit doing that. Oops. Oh, no, wait, it never but it doubles its effect. It's fine. Multi-strike, multi-strike, multi-strike. <laughs> oh, I forgot about this summon stuff. How did I forget about the summon dupes? It's like the biggest thing. Ooh, that's a lot of molting. Right, let's throw you on the top line. Fine, that's just to sack the molting him. Great. Well, this isn't the kind of one where I get another one horns tome, is it? It's a lot of welder helpers, which I've been specifically avoiding. I honestly don't think I need to play any of the welder helpers this fight. Our armor is good enough, and with seven multi strike on 64 damage, I think our damage is probably good enough too. Just got a hunch. Oh, there's the fire jumper. Thank you. You gotta love the enemy's commitment to buffing me. And by you in this circumstance, I mean me. Also, how did you get the two impeter boxes when there were six one horn tomes in there? There were three impeter boxes, six one horn tomes, and you managed to get two of the impeter boxes. You, you, you devilish little boy. How dare you. Well, what's my goal now? I'm gonna try and make imps on the bottom floor just do all my damage for me against the boss. How about that? Let's go there, there, there. there and then anger him. Let's see how well this do. If it doesn't do well, we just win on the next floor instead. All right, you have the sweep. Uh, yeah, this isn't gonna do well because of the sweep. Well, it's not sweet, but it is trample. When attacking, excess damage is applied to the subsequent enemy unit. Okay. Great. I mean, they still end up dealing a fair chunk of damage here. But that's why they don't do much. Anyway, I'm just gonna murder you and then more fledgling him. <laughs> I 
Oh, with that many multi-strikes. Oh. My god. Speaking of multi-strike, Grgs go. The thing I was asking for earlier. Demon units get multi-strike. Thank you. Not necessary, but thank you. Oh, important work. That's all I needed. Adaptive mutation actually here is also interesting if we can remove its consume. So I want to go to a spell shop to actually remove... Uh, I want to remove... No, not remove. Sorry. I want important work to get holdover because I'll cast it every turn if I get the opportunity. And I want adaptive mutation to remove its consume. Although I'm very unlikely to be able to cycle back to it at any reasonable speed. Or maybe to dupe it. We honestly have most of the artifacts that we need for a deck like this. So we'll go over this way. I wish the dupe five event was still in there. Sadly, I already got it. Okay. Consume. Oh, lower its cost as well. Make it free. It's not like it cost me much to use. I may just save the rest of my money because it's a good amount. Units cannot be healed. That's yeah, fine. Units can't be healed, but they have 10 extra health. is completely fine by me. It's giving them more multi-strike, as if the Gurd's Goat is the thing that I just got, but they get the Petrified Heart, so... It's a weird little uh, visual bug there, but it's, it's not like it causes a problem at all. Um, okay. Great the champ. Especially with the uh, multi-strikes, getting it to uh, to Hornbreaker level 3, as it says up top on here, uh, is going to be really, really good. Obviously, also the extra armor. like it's, Everything says that I take that one. So our buff and debuff effects will be removed. It's okay, though. Let's set up on the second floor. Let's see him in a box first, actually. You can go there. Oh, my imps aren't gonna die! Damn it! Why did I do this to myself? Yeah, well, now my imps aren't gonna die. There's gonna be a problem. Well, fine. This build is now, mostly at least, about just trying to get as many uh, multi-strikes out as I possibly can. Let's also just try and get rid of these units on this floor if that's possible at all. Okay. Give her a Scholar. Get an Impeta Box back. Let's transcend him. It's our first one already. There's way too much armor for the bottom line. Hold on to the transcend imp until it's significantly better than it currently is. I also want to try and hold on to extra energy whenever possible. Yeah, for the sake of the uh, the whole one haunts home thing that we're about to do. Okay. Can't play the Adaptive Mutation yet. Actually, hang on. What is your base damage? 15? No, 20. Yeah. Never mind. It's fine. It won't flip you. See what we've got. The imps in these boxes are not good. One horns tome. Please draw another one horns tome. Dang, that would have ruled. Oh, full up. I only got one copy of important work as well.
Like, this isn't going to cause us to lose. But, you know, the, the run could have been nuttier if, uh, if we had the ability to get rid of them a little bit more. Dang, petrified. I never think of my imps as units. Like, I... I constantly get surprised that they get 5 armor at the start of battle or 3 health at the start of battle from other relics or, you know, 10 from this is the case maybe at the moment. Let's just get all of the energy in the universe. I need an important work so I can play my transcend imps. One transcendent right now would be so good. Well, at least we have important work in the next hand. Just gonna have to see if six times multi strike is enough. It is. Give me my transcendent, please. No. No, my transcendent. Ah, well. I'll just have to settle for very easily killing the enemy. and run especially when you get the instant call that early and uh and you know plan a couple routes ahead as i was constantly trying to do there i even left myself open to a bunch of routes that i didn't even end up executing on right like i was leaving open uh extra win conditions that i could have gone for and ended up with one golden as far as i'm concerned that's uh it's basically as successful as a run can be for the moment my name is Rhapsody, the name of the game it's been Monster Train. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.